in the name of my ancestors peace forever and always and welcome to another edition of what we call the realities temple on earth internet ministry I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program known here on social media wherever you may find me I am known as the mighty 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 mm. Angel Snub Nub 7, I am your soul brother. Number one. I want to tell those who may not know because it's important. In the law, we have something called circumstantial evidence and when you are trying to prove especially a murder case with circumstantial evidence it's very very difficult because it is circumstantial you you look at the evidence or an action from somebody and you could tell that there's a possibility of whatever but you really it's not concrete evidence like DNA and fingerprints but I want to bring something to the topics something to the platform that those of us we defend brother Malcolm X because he has earned it because he deserves it against those who are alive who wish to tarnish and slander that man's name I want to add more to the story And this is something, not only myself, there are many who live this. You don't have to, you don't have to tell me what you wrote, uh, read in a book, and uh, uh, I got the document. I lived this. I saw it with my own eyes. In the 1980s, I was in the ranks. I was 18, 19 years old, maybe in my 20s by this time. I was probably in my 20s, early 20s, 20, 21 or something like that. Jesse Jackson, Jesse Lewis Jackson was running for president of the United States. And he allowed Louis Farrakhan to endorse his candidacy, candidacy, I can't say that to save my life, for the president of the United States. 19, this was 1984. 83, 84, something like that. And uh, I'm looking at the whole thing. Minister Farrakhan asked the believers, I want us to, to register to vote and we're going to vote for and we're going to support Jesse Jackson. I personally did not register. I've, I've never registered to vote. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught that Muslims could vote if we find a candidate that would benefit us, represent our needs. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad did not say that Muslims could not vote. I myself personally, I did not see Jesse Jackson as somebody I wanted to vote for. I don't see I didn't see Jesse Jackson as somebody I'm not going to judge the man I don't know where he stands but I just don't see him as a person who really would stand up and be a good representative and look out for the benefit of soul brothers and sisters in this country I refuse and the other brothers like well the minister I don't care what the minister said he's not I'm not his slave I don't care what he said. I'm not voting. 
but I will help. I will still help you do what you, what y'all feel that you need to do. I'm personally, I'm not voting for Jesse Jackson. And now, after hindsight, I recognize that Louis Farrakhan was just using Jesse Jackson because at that time, even though we were able to gather thousands and thousands of people for a meeting, Minister Louis Farrakhan was still grassroots. And of course, being grandiose as he is, he is yearning for the national spotlight. And Jesse Jackson took a devil for a friend, allowed him on the bandwagon, and actually, Louis Farrakhan sabotaged Jesse Jackson's uh, run for the presidency with his talk. Now, you know that you can only talk a certain way. This man is trying to run for the presidency. You run around, he's running around talking about... Uh, and had to explain about the Hitler thing. Some of y'all have heard about that. Uh, Hitler was a great man statement or something that he had, he was talking about. He was a sabotage this man. You know you can't. If one of you, I was endorsing any of you for the presidency or any type of position, when we need Caucasian people and Mexicans and other folks, whoever, Jewish people, we need their vote. We need their support. I'm not going to come out here. I'm going to be very careful on how I say because I'm supporting you and I want you to be president of the United States. Farrakhan used Jesse Jackson to get into the, into the national spotlight. He was just somebody to use. And after Farrakhan made it into the national spotlight, started getting all these interviews because of this Hitler was a great man. Uh, statement then just like he does all the time he, he threw Jesse Jackson under the bus any interview any conference that you see Farrakhan with Jesse Jackson you will see him always trying to show I'm smarter I'm better than Jesse But Jesse is the reason why. Jesse didn't learn a lesson. Then Jesse took this clown to save this pilot that got shot down in Iraq or Iran, some damn way. Jesse had to learn the hard way. I don't know why, why he thought far, maybe because of the thousands of people that he was able to gather. That was a, See, that's another thing. I want some of that too. If I get with Farrakhan, all these people see you sold your yourself out and you didn't know Jesse that you were selling yourself down a river just because and see some of us on YouTube do that some of us on YouTube do that oh I want to get with son I want to get with Sonetta because Sonetta got all these people watching him and Sonetta throw y'all throw y'all under the bus he don't give a damn about none of you but now Jesse Jackson had an interview with this journalist named Milton Coleman. And this was behind the scenes. Milton Coleman and Jesse Jackson was talking behind the scenes. The cam camera was off. This was a private or, uh, conversation. And Jesse Jackson made reference to where Jewish people live, he made a reference to Jaime Town and something else, I believe. And Milton Coleman wrote an article and reported the, converse, the this private conversation behind the scenes. He reported it. Minister Louis Farrakhan came out after he learned about this. And he started calling Milton Coleman a traitor. The same kind of rhetoric that he used with Malcolm X. Same kind, same kind of rhetoric. Now I wish I could get the actual speech. I can't find it. 
I can't even find the the uh, the news report on YouTube, or I can't find it. But it was a threat. Farrakhan came and made a threat against this man's life, and basically he was he was saying the same thing about Milton Coleman that he did with Malcolm in 1965. This is 1984. Now there are those who say, oh the Muslims, they didn't kill Malcolm X. Here's the same kind of behavior in 1984. I'm in the ranks, I'm listening to this, and I'm embarrassed. What are you, what are you doing this for? I'm looking at the whole situation. Milton Coleman is a traitor. He betrayed black people. He deserved death. The same kind of stuff that he was saying about Malcolm X. But it's going to turn out different for Farrakhan this time. Because there was no takers. And believe me, I heard it with my own ears. I was there in real time. The brothers got riled up, but they never got to the point where they started talking about this man need to be knocked off. But Farrakhan was doing his, his damnness to put that rhetoric out there. There was no takers. And see, 1984 was not like 1965. Law enforcement started looking into these threats. Because that's what it was. If Malcolm was alive in 1984, or if, or if Malcolm was alive now, all that, all those threats, that cartoon, all that silly stuff that the Nation of Islam did against Malcolm, somebody would be facing terroristic charges, assault charges. So no, Farrakhan had no takers. And pretty soon, the reports start coming out that they were looking at Farrakhan to charge him with assault, terroristic threat. They didn't call it terroristic threat then, but that's what it, assault type charges. Oh, you ought to see him. See, I, I witnessed this and saw the whole thing on TV or whatever. With my own, I'm living this real time. Farrakhan come on TV. I, I didn't mean it that way. You said that this man was a traitor to black people. He deserved death. The same kind of rhetoric. Now you're going to try to cover your ass. Because you because he's looking at these charges. Farrakhan is a coward. You had to be naive and stupid. When he started calling for Malcolm X death, and these naive young men carried it out because they thought they were doing something wonderful, and the Nation of Islam left them out to dry. Didn't do a damn thing for none of them. Whether they was guilty, whether they was innocent, the Nation of Islam did nothing for them. And so they sat. You you didn't even get a, a a bag of Roman noodles and a Twinkie from the Nation of Islam and you sat these men thought if I kill Malcolm, Elijah Muhammad is gonna be proud, Farrakhan gonna be proud, woo, Allah gonna be proud, we gonna get all this honor. The only thing you got was time, hard time. So here we are, we have Farrakhan on TV now and he's struggling trying to I, see I didn't mean it that way uh, blah 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 I'm looking at this coward he's a coward trying to get somebody else to do your dirty work this is not 1965 people are not stupid like that and right now there are those on Facebook talking about there's some kind of secret army if Farrakhan was. They might do that. 
You're not going to get any reward. You're going to end up in the morgue or in prison. You're not going to get nobody going. And even if you get away with the murder, nobody's going to care nothing about you. Just like they did those who, who, who murdered Malcolm. You're not going to get any reward. You're not going to get any honor. You're going to get left out to dry. And see, there are those who talk about the Muslims couldn't do that. They have the same behavior today. I have relatives in the Nation of Islam and even back in the 80s, I told my relatives that Elijah Muhammad, Nation of Islam, was wrong for what they did to that man. You ought to hear how hateful and nasty. I heard people say, I, I killed Malcolm myself. They wasn't even born in 1965. I killed Malcolm myself. But no, the Nation of Islam couldn't do that. Me, myself, I've been threatened two times in the mosque. I decided not to try three times. Three strikes you out. Almost had to run brothers over with my car because they was following this idiot captain. You, did, you disrespect the minister. How did I disrespect the minister? You know what you did. Would you not? You are the one making the accusation. Tell me what I did, sir. How many of you have listened to Pork Chop? When Pork Chop talk about Malcolm, look how hateful and nasty she is. Oh, but oh no, but they couldn't. They couldn't kill Malcolm X. So when you actually look at circumstantial evidence. When you look at the mindset and the behaviors of these people, now mind you, Elijah Muhammad said that Malcolm deserved what he got. They celebrated Malcolm's death. Now when Dr. King was murdered, you had white folks out here, uh, it's a good thing. I'm glad that Dr. Dr. Luther Kuhn is assassinated. They celebrated when they locked up Huey P. Newton. The white folks did. Now to my knowledge, I don't see, and you didn't hear from the government, when Obama, when they allegedly killed Osama bin Laden, I say allegedly because there's no body. They never showed a body. They bragged about killing Osama bin, bin Laden. Now, when Malcolm was killed, why didn't the government, government, Lyndon B. Johnson say, well, he was a violent man and he got what he asked for, you know, whatever. But the nation of Islam made it very clear they celebrated. But you didn't hear nothing from the government. And to my knowledge, there was no big, there was no big thing from white people, period, about Malcolm's murder. But the Nation of Islam made it clear. Yay! <laughs> Ding dong, the witch is dead. Oh, but they couldn't do it. So, you're not going to tell me. You're not going to make me drink your Kool-Aid. Because I know how evil and nasty and violent some of these people can get. But they didn't do nothing. Oh, and all the death threats I got over the years from Nation of Islam people and Farrakhan flunky supporters. How cowardly Farrakhan was. They falling behind this man. Jot down your comment. Let's talk about it. Anybody got to add? Please do so. We'll catch y'all on the flip.